everybody, my name is Mona De Lacey and I'm going to be talking to you today about mental skills or sports psychology for youth athletes. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future sports psychology videos. Oh, you make me want to talk back, talk back to you. Is there a difference between working with elite level athletes with mental skills and youth level athletes in mental skills. Now, there is a difference, but the only difference basically is how basic you make it as a coach or as a mental skills coach. You want to make it so that the youth athlete understands what sports psychology is all about. You want to teach it to them in a way that's basic and that's fun and in an environment where they will learn and where they can actually use their mental skills and carry it over not just in sport and in life but also in their schoolwork. Now, what are some of the benefits of teaching sports psychology or mental skills to youth athletes? Okay, benefit number one, it teaches athletes to work together as a team. Um, may it be a team sport or an individual sport, you can teach as a coach or as a mental skills coach, you can teach teamwork. Um, when you can teach athletes teamwork by doing uh, group activities, you will then teach them to work together in sport and again, you can teach them this in life as well. Benefit number two, mental skills can teach the athlete confidence. And what I mean by confidence is it teaches the athlete to believe in themselves. If you as a coach or as a mental skills coach can teach an athlete to believe in themselves, it makes things so much easier for them as an athlete. It makes them feel that they are empowering. Um, when athletes believe in themselves, um, they carry themselves different. They have a different way of walking. They have a different way of talking. And the confidence again, uh, like I said earlier, it doesn't just um, it doesn't just carry over uh, from sport to life, but it can c carry over into so many aspects of life. It can carry over to things like uh, public speaking, um, school projects, um, you know, working together in groups. Those are all great benefits of what a mental skill can teach an athlete uh, when it has to do with confidence and believing in themselves. Benefit number three of mental skills for athlete is. It can teach an athlete to bounce back from a bad competition or a bad training. When you teach an athlete from young that training and competition isn't always going to be a smooth running, they're not always going to be super successful. Um, if something goes wrong on the day, um, it's not it's not the end of the world. Um, what they should do is um, reanalyze. You know what went wrong go back into the next training, uh, don't beat themselves up, but just remember that, you know, this happens to almost every top athlete out there. There's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs, but it's what you do with those downs that makes you a great athlete at the end of the day. Number four would be positivity. Now, teaching an athlete positivity is a great way to go into sport and in life and into anything they do with um, their careers. Being positive means that they can see the good in every bad situation. When you teach a kid positivity, especially um, sometimes you get those athletes who will come into training, um, they just don't want to train. Um, they'll just come in there and just be down with life. They'll just be, you know, not disciplined in training. Um, they'll just, you know, be like, I don't want to do this. Or, you know, what is the point of uh, doing this training? but or, or saying that maybe they've got other problems aside from training um, you know you can just teach them that to, uh, if they can separate things what a massive benefit it would be at the end of the day to their training so being positive is so important especially when the athletes grow into their sport and realize that you know again sport isn't always a smooth running it's going to be hard work um, it's going to be uh, blood, sweat and tears. Um, you want to teach them that even through all of those aspects to stay positive and have their eye on the goal at the end of the day. Now, a fifth benefit with sports psychology and youth athlete is sports psychology can teach an athlete that everything that you do in life will be hard work. 
okay nothing will come easy you are preparing them as a coach that doesn't matter what life throws at you you know you can with hard work and dedication you can get through with it but the thing is what the athletes need to remember is nothing is going to be easy nothing is going to be just handed to them in on a silver platter um, so it's very important for them to realize that if they want to be successful they need to work hard for anything in life may it be sport schoolwork or even their mental skills training Tip number six would be teaching the athlete leadership skills leadership skills is such an important aspect and this can be done in basically any environment or sport now what i used to do with my athletes and as an olympic weightlifting coach is i used to take especially if i had a very big group of for example uh, 10 to 15 athletes i used to coach um, i would be the only one as the coach um, but i would take the athletes who's been in the sport the longest i would then divide them into groups and I would say that my athletes, um, the senior type of athletes um, in the youth group, would then take a leadership role. Um, I would give them the exercises to do, and they would be the ones who would demo the exercises to the younger athletes to show the athletes how the exercises are done. Now, I found this was a great way of giving an athlete then a type of a responsibility. Um, it made them feel that, you know, even if they were the shy ones in the group, um, even if they were the ones in the beginning who didn't want to talk, um, they didn't really want to, to share it, but as they got more confident with their sport um, and with me giving them that responsibility of teaching or uh, providing as a leadership position, um, it taught them like a valuable skill that, you know, if they worked with small groups or large groups, it made them feel a part of the group. It made them feel that they were the leader. And again, this can be carried over into so many aspects. So it's very important to realize that what you teach the athlete as a coach, these are the things that will change their lives forever. Now, what is important when it comes to teaching the athletes mental skills? Now, one of the first mental skills that I teach my athletes is goal setting. Now, teaching the athletes goal setting um, is a valuable tool um, that they can start from a very young age. Now, you need to make it as basic as possible so that the athlete understands that goal setting or mental skills um, shouldn't be something that boggles their mind. Um, now, something that I used to love doing as um, a weightlifting coach is I used to get my athletes together, especially at the end of training. Um, in the beginning of training, you can do it, but I found in the beginning of training, my athletes were sometimes uh, very rushed. Um, sometimes they um, came from another sporting activity or they came from school. Um, so I liked doing it at the end while we stretched and while everyone was in a relaxed state. Um, we would also use it as a time to reflect on how training has been going. Um, we would talk about how things in their life is going or school um, everything that you know goes around stuff like that um, and when it came to uh, us setting goals i would often just talk to my athletes and explain to them uh, what is goal setting um, i i would teach them um, simple short-term goal setting and i would also teach them long-term goal setting now i also used to have a book um, that I would bring to coaching and in that book I would say to my athletes you know um, after their first training um, especially when they've been doing weightlifting for quite some time um, you can't do it maybe on the first day of training because the athlete won't really know the skill or the sport so much um, so you want to wait until they've been doing the sport for quite some time um, and in this book we would go and sit and write down um, what we want the athletes to achieve i would give my feedback as a coach but i would also want my athletes to do this by themselves um, use this time to think uh, what they want to achieve this could be um, lifting weights wise or this could e also even be a, a simple type of exercise and maybe they want to better the exercise or they want to do x amount of repetitions um, so as a coach, I found it was very important to give the athlete that decision-making skill um, to go and think what goals they want to achieve and then write the goals down. And what we would do is at the end of the week or at the end of the month, depending on which um, goals we would work on, 
we would sit down and then assess to see if the athletes have reached their goals. If they have reached it, we sit down and we talk about the next set of goals that they will be setting. If the athletes did not achieve the goals, we will also talk about why the athletes did not achieve the goals. And this is also a good time for a coach to step in to make sure that the athlete isn't overreaching when they set their goals. Because if an athlete, especially from a youth or a young age, um, uh, overreaches with their goals and they don't achieve it, um, this makes them feel that they are not, uh, they're not good enough and it demotivates them. So you want to make sure that the athlete stays motivated so they need to set realistic goals. Now, another valuable skill that you can teach your athlete as a coach is self-talk. Now, what is self-talk? Self-talk can be a word or it can be an sentence that an athlete says to themselves. It could also be something that the athlete thinks about when they do their lifting um, or any type of sport, for example. Um, and you can teach the athlete how to speak to themselves in a positive way. Um, now, I'm going to use Olympic weightlifting again as an example um, and how you can convert the positive self-talk into getting the athletes motivated for their actual lifting. Um, so when the athlete goes and do their lift, they walk onto the platform, they could potentially think of one or two words. Um, so I would give the athlete a cue um, to potentially say, uh, straight back and drive with your legs. Um, those are types of self-talks that the athlete can say to themselves or even rehearse in their mind before they do their actual lift. Um, Another thing an athlete can do is they can tell themselves, I am strong or I'm confident. Um, things even like, um, I'm feeling great today. Um, you want to teach the athlete that it's very important to speak to themselves in a positive way. When the athletes start to speak to themselves in a negative way, like saying, I'm not strong enough, I'm not beautiful, I feel weak, um, I'm wasting my time very very rarely does an athlete perform at their top level now may it be a youth athlete or even uh, an elite level athlete it's very important to know that um, what you think uh, often carries over or most of the time carries over to how the athlete performs so you want to teach the athlete that the way they think is the way they're going to perform so if you can teach them this from a very young age i can guarantee you this will just become easier as the athlete becomes um, more elite or even older and this will make a big difference in how the athlete performs um, at you know any level of competition the third mental skill that you can teach the athlete is called visualization um, another term for visualization is also mental imagery now again you don't have to make this super complicated for the athlete um, a basic way that you can make visualization or mental imagery really simple especially for a youth athlete is you can either demo the exercises for the athlete the exact way you want the athlete to do the actual exercise by doing this in a successful way um, the athlete will see themselves mentally um, doing the exercise just the same way that you did it as the coach um, you could also be playing videos of top class athletes um, you know before the session or after the session um, so the athletes can see what the elite level athletes are doing um, in their trainings or in competitions and the athletes will then um, be mentally seeing themselves performing the lifts or performing the movements just like those elite level athletes um, a nice and simple skill that you can do with your athletes is also you can let them all before the training um, lay down uh, be in a super relaxed state just for a few minutes and just make them or try and get them to actually see um, the training or the exercise that they will be doing in a successful way so if they will be doing snatches for example in weightlifting um, you can get them to be in a relaxed state um, just visualize themselves doing a simple snatch uh, or even visualizing the athlete that they were watching and this again you can make it more advanced as the athlete gets older another important skill that you can teach a youth athlete is relaxation techniques 
Now, relaxation techniques is something that is very important for all level athletes. But if you can start teaching this to athletes from a youth level, imagine what a difference it will make when an athlete reaches an elite level when it comes to their sport. Now, what you can do with relaxation exercises, again, to make it super basic and super simple for the athletes is um, breathing exercises. Now, how often as you as a coach um, have seen your athlete when they are going for um, either a heavy lift or um, a new skill that they've never done before or even a competition and the athlete has been super nervous. Now, if you can teach the athlete to be grounded, um, to focus on their breathing and to focus on something other than the actual lift or the movement or the skill that they'll be performing, um, this would just help the athlete uh, get their heart rate down, um, get them into the zone, um, also just give them the confidence to go and attempt that new skill that you are teaching them as a coach. Now, a skill that is so important to teach an athlete and again, when you teach this skill, um, it's important to teach the athlete to realize that they can only control the controllables. And what I mean by this is, there are so many things, especially in sport, where things are out of your control. Um, in Olympic weightlifting, I can give an example. Um, you could be traveling to a competition and the bus could be late. Um, you could be going to the competition and you have forgotten something. Um, you could be going to the competition and say you have to drop some weight and the sauna isn't working. Um, just those are small examples. Um, that are things that are out of your control. Um, obviously forgetting something is something that, are, that is in your control. So if an athlete can make sure that they um, pack their stuff beforehand, um, they make sure that they have all their things, their gear, their kit, everything ready for their competition, this gives them the confidence to know that they are ready to compete. Now as the athlete, um, when you teach them that they need to focus on the controllables. Now focusing on the controllables are things like your thoughts. Um, so you can teach the athlete, they control their thoughts. Um, when they go into the competition, whenever there's a negative thought, they must immediately block that negative thought out and replace it with a positive thought, okay? Another thing that is in their control is the fact that they have prepared as hard as they can for this competition. So it's important for the athlete to realize that they have gone into the competition, given their all, and they are ready to do the best that they can do. Um, another thing is making sure that the athlete has all the equipment. Um, those are things that are in the athlete's control. When they focus on the things that they can control and realize that the uncontrollables is something they can't control, this again will get the athletes to not be as nervous when they go and compete. Our skill that involves um, something that you can do before training, during training and after training, which you can teach an athlete from a young, young age is having a routine. Um, like I said earlier, with some of the mental skills, if you can teach the athlete these mental skills from a very young age already, imagine what a difference it would make in the long run. Now, having a routine in sport is very important because it makes the athlete feel a lot more relaxed. It makes them feel that they are in control. Um, it makes them feel that they've got a plan going into their training or have a plan going into their competition. Um, and if they can master these type of routines already in their training setting, um, when it comes to competition time, it will just come automatic and they do not have to change anything so the athlete can just focus on their performance when it is game day. Now, an example of a routine before training. Um, this could be anything from packing your bag, it could be anything from your warm-up, um, making sure you've had uh, your food um, so that you're fueled for your training session. Um, an example of a routine during a training, um, that could be again the athlete's uh, training program. Maybe the athlete has a training book or training log that they write their training in. Um, so making sure that they have this book um, that's ready for their training and potentially even the way they do the exercises, um, things that they would do, maybe a routine could be chalking their hands before they go onto their lifts. Okay, these are simple routines um, that the athletes can do and that you can teach as a coach. And as the athlete gets more um, advanced, the athlete can start to make this routine more and more their own. 
Um, a nice example of a routine after the training could be things like their recovery meals. Um, it could be things like going to sleep at a certain time um, so that they don't go and sleep one night at 8 o'clock, one night at 10 o'clock, one night at 11 p.m. Um, so that the athlete has a very good routine. Um, they wake up at the same time and you know this just makes the athlete feel um, like they are a lot more organized in their life and like i said uh, this is again something that is not just for sport but i can guarantee you this could be even um, be done when it comes to schoolwork and other things that you do in your life now as a coach um, i have found that teaching my athletes mental skills has definitely made a huge difference in their lives um, i've had a lot of parents come back to me and say um, you know all of a sudden they are cleaning their rooms, all of a sudden they are helping in the house, all of a sudden they want to take a leadership role um, when it comes to certain projects, when they do family outings, etc. Um, I've also had parents come to me and say all of a sudden um, their concentration in school is a lot better. So there's a lot of benefits when it comes to teaching the athletes mental skills. Now, mental skills coaching, when it comes to youth athletes, it doesn't have to be in a setting where you call the athletes in and have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the athlete and make it super formal. Um, you want to make this probably as informal as you can. You want to teach the athletes that um, mental skills, yes, it will, be work um, it will have to be trained just like you train your muscle but as the coach it's your responsibility to also teach the athlete that learning mental skills can be fun um, when you can teach the athletes that mental skills can be fun and it can be simple and you can make it basic um, it will make them feel like they want to understand it a lot more and once an athlete understands the mental aspects of sport the physical is something that just goes hand in hand to make an elite level athlete at the end of the day so again it's very important to make sure that um, when you teach these mental skills you want to make it as basic as possible so guys if you have liked my video about uh, mental skills coaching sports psychology and youth athletes please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future sports psychology videos